Okay, you're all set. Okay, here we go. Okay. Good evening, Mahopak community, and welcome to another exciting installment of the Mahopak Central School District Board of Education work session. This is Tuesday, November 16th, 2021. Can I entertain a motion to open the meeting, please? Vice President Savino, second. 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 So, oh, that was a threesome. Well, that's very good. I, I'm going to call for Mike right there. Mike Simone. Thank you, Mike. All in favor? Aye. 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 Please join me stand for the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, we have a uh, oh, we have a very nice, uh, a very nice uh, uh, work session planned for this evening, and uh, we wish everybody well, and hope everybody's doing doing well. Um, if you uh, if you were able to attend the Rye High School Mahopak uh, Indian football game last uh, uh, last week, um, uh, it was a uh, the hard fought game, uh, right down to the wire. Took them to overtime, but the uh, but your Mahopak Indians uh, lost on a on a on a, uh, on a field goal after an incredible goal line stand uh, and preventing them from getting in the end zone. So feel sorry for the lads, but they really gave it their all and uh, and they really put the, their best foot forward. So uh, uh, so uh, congratulations to Rye and congratulations to our Mahopak football team for one hell of a season. Uh, with that said, um, we have um, what I'd like to do right now is we'll we'll go down to our uh, presentation for this evening. And I'd like to, uh, I'd like to, uh, I'm sorry, are you, what do you want me to do? Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> you're you're me and I'm going to do so you can go right to oh, okay. I guess well, I'll, you can, I'll introduce you. Yeah, go ahead. If you, Thank okay, you. That's you my, my pleasure. <laughs> okay. So as, as we have been talking about the importance of social emotional um, learning, for everybody in our organization, not just the teachers. I'm taking this off. That's okay because you can't hear me. Um, especially if we're doing the Zoom. Um, for this, this social emotional support of our entire district, meaning students, faculty, and all staff, whether it's bus drivers, secretaries, custodial, monitors, aides. Um, it's so important now more than ever, basically because of what we've all been through over the last almost 20 months when it comes to COVID. And uh, Dr. Stowell, along with uh, Michelle Tween, our assistant principal from Austin Road, will be presenting some of the work that has begun this year in the elementary and what we're looking at doing over the next number of years in, you know, promoting social emotional wellness for um, everybody here at the Mayo Pack Central School District. So without further ado, I turn it over to Dr. Stowell and, and Michelle for their presentation to the Board of Education and the community tonight. So thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. DeCarlo, Board of Education. I'm going to ask uh, Michelle Tween to come join me, Assistant Principal at Austin Road, who um, really is helping us spearhead this effort. So I really want to thank Mrs. Tween as she comes up here. We're kicking Mr. Trombley out of here for a moment. It's not really been social emotionally, but Mike, you're still always welcome to join us for this presentation. So um, the first thing I want to do is just Go back just a little bit. I promise uh, I'll let Michelle do most of the speaking because you've all heard me speak enough about this, but it's really important. Uh, just so everybody knows um, out there in the community, we've been working on this for over a year. We had a district wide committee that looked at social emotional learning and what may have packed Central School District needs to do to help our staff, to help our students understand their emotions, be able to regulate their emotions manage their emotions, as well as manage emotions and, and help with emotions and others, because that promotes self-esteem, less discipline, higher GPA. All the research has shown that a social emotionally healthy organization produces better employees, better students for schools, and better outcomes for our students in our community. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the move around the room a little bit and um, just talk a little bit about the committee's work. The committee was made up, as everybody knows, from students to clerical to teachers uh, to uh, everybody in our community, like aides. Uh, and we worked really hard gathering information back from our community 
about our school community about why do you want to come to work? Why do you want to learn uh, in school? And what we do all of our work over a year, I won't bore you with it, we came up with the mission and a vision, as well as uh, trying to find a framework that would match our mission and our vision. So as I shared with the board in June and over the summer, and, and everybody got a copy of this, is our recommendations from the, from the committee, is our mission and our vision are when emotions matter, people matter. I think it states clearly that our people are our commodity, our students and our staff. And when they matter, we know they all come with emotion. And our mission, we believe, uh, that, that the school should have is we need to be rooted in empathy, belonging and respect, and value through our connections and our relationships. And that came clear with all the work that we did throughout the school district. Um, the other thing we decided to do is we decided to come up with a framework. And we're going to talk a little bit about that framework uh, tonight. And Mrs. Tween is going to run you through some activities to kind of give you a sense of what it may look like. But just for the committee, just for the, uh, the board, excuse me, to kind of understand where we're going as a district or what we recommended as a district was last year was the year zero, which is where we had our um, training of a uh, uh, pilot pro program of ruler, as well as our SEL mission and vision work that our committee uh, completed. We are in year one of implementation, and that means that this, where, where we are right now is right here, where the, in the highlighted yellow, that we have two secondary teams that are going for ruler training right now, the implementation teams, teams of five, five at the high school, five at the middle school. We have uh, a partial implementation at the elementary school. Last year, Mrs. Tween headed up an implementation team for all elementary schools, and now they're beginning their process of implementing um, partially at the elementary school, and, uh, uh, all schools, and, and that's where we are. And our hope is the following years, the secondary implementation teams will do partial implementation next year, and we'll have full implementation by year four of this plan. And so what is the framework of ruler that matches our mission and our vision? That's what we want to give the Board of Education and the community tonight, a little bit of an understanding, a hands-on experience of what does ruler training look like in a classroom, in a faculty meeting, and that's what we hope to do tonight. And I'll kick it over to Michelle Tweeney to talk a little bit about that and walk us through it. Sure, thank you, Greg. And thank you all for um, allowing me to be here and uh, explore this with everyone. Um, it's been a really great experience for the faculty and staff so far. The students are already reaping some of the benefits, um, but I'll go through this to kind of um, go backwards a little bit because looking at ruler, recognizing, understanding, labeling, expressing, and regulating emotion um, seems like it would be something very simple, um, but I thought I'd give you some examples. Um, so recognizing your emotions is about interpreting your thoughts um, based on physiology. Like when you get angry, you get hot and shaky. Um, your facial expressions, your overall body um, composition and language um, it, when you, when everyone, adults and children, start to recognize those physiological changes that happen, um, it builds self-awareness and enhances your social awareness. So you begin to understand social cues from other people. Um, understanding those emotions, um, the causes and consequences, right? So how emotions affect your thinking and learning, your decision making, and your behavior. So when you I think about something like the Empire State Building. For some people going to the top of the Empire State Building, it's really excited. And for somebody like me who doesn't like heights, it's not. <laughs> so understanding that the same experience is different for everyone. So you can't, so understanding that as much as you might love it and I might hate it, both are okay. Um, then we go on to the labeling piece, um, building kind of a nuanced vocabulary uh, to describe your emotions and it helps effectively communicate our needs and identify the best ways to manage our emotions so it's one of those name it to tame it right so if you can say that i'm angry when this happens you can start to look for the things that make you upset or this kind of thing makes me really happy you want to do more of that um that expressing piece um the how and when to show emotion the individual differences it's kind of where you come off with your uh, personalities, your Tiggers versus your Eeyores. Um, and saying, being able to 
understand the social norms around some of those expressions and where and when those are okay. Um, and then finally, regulating your emotions, which is probably the toughest. Um, managing our emotions by thoughts or actions um, to reach an emotional goal, whether you want to calm down a little bit, whether you want to get in a better mood, um, whatever the case is, you are able to do that a little bit better when you learn how to regulate your emotions. So I think that that's something coming out of a pandemic or still being in it, but really navigating it to its full capacity emotionally is being able to do all of those things. So the stress level that we all encounter and the being home, being back in school, hybrid, full in, full out, all of those different things, being able to um, really help children and teachers understand that no emotion is bad, all of them have value, and that you can utilize how you um, express and all of those things, those emotions will facilitate better relationships, will facilitate um, safer spaces for you to express how you feel. Um, and I think that that's what certainly our teachers, staff, all of our stakeholders really need is to know that the whole pack is a safe space um, as far as being able to, we're in this together. It's a, it's a community that is navigating this as, as a community. And how we get through it is by understanding that everyone is different. Um, we are all in a space where we crave understanding, but at the same time, um, we just have to be there for each other. And it creates a connection. Um, when we talk about the emotion scientist piece, um, these are kind of the, when we did our training, um, we had different goals for each week. Emotion scientists, it really starts with the adults. It talks about how you look inward and you start to think about your emotions and how it drives some of the ways that you react to things. It drives how you make decisions. It drives your relationships. Um, the charter is a living document that different groups, you can have a, a classroom charter, you can have a school charter, you can have a school district charter. We started with the elementary schools with the faculty and staff. Um, and what it's based on or are how you want to feel when you're at work. It's almost like your classroom rules, but about emotions. So it's really, you sit back and you say, all right, well, I want to feel respected at work. Well, respected means something different to everybody. So you have to drill down into what does it mean? What does it look like when you're being respected at work? How do you want your colleagues, your students to interact with you um, in order to, for you to feel that way? So it gives you kind of an if-then statement about emotions. Um, and you then you go into the mood meter. And that's something that is really um, helpful for students and for adults. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Um, the mood meter helps you to build your emotional vocabulary. So when somebody asks you how you are, it's not always fine. <laughs> um, I think we're all too fine being fine. Um, <laughs> so it comes down to giving yourself and giving students um, better, a better understanding of actually how they're feeling. Um, when they talk about the meta moment, it's how it's seeing yourself as what you interpret as your best self and how you react to different situations as that person. Uh, the blueprint is really a, a map for conflict resolution. It will help um, students interact in a more respectful way with each other when trying to resolve conflict. It will help adults help children do that when there's a conflict on the playground or on the football field, whatever the case is. Um, it gives you kind of a map on how to um, come to a satisfactory resolution for everyone involved. So that's really where, where we are right now. So I think what we want to do is give you a, a lens into what an activity may look like. So Michelle's going to take us through the mood meter. The mood meter, I think, is probably the biggest component of the ruler program. It's probably where our kids and our staff spend the most time because it's the hardest, right? It's the hardest to understand how you feel and recognize how you feel and then find the right language to label it appropriately. So I'm going to pass something out. Michelle will walk us through this. Mike, will ask you to help with this thing. We'll make sure everybody has that. This is, this is the ruler mood meter. Michelle will talk a little bit about how we use it. So as everyone receives one, um, the mood meter is 
helps adults and children and really anyone. Um, give gives a little bit of a structure to trying to figure out how you feel, right? So as you see the axes, there's an energy level. So it goes from very low energy to high energy and goes from unpleasant feelings to pleasant feelings. So you've got four quadrants. The red is high energy and very pleasant. So when you're really, um, or unpleasant, I'm sorry. Um, so when you're really upset about something, when you're frustrated, when you just are faced with something that's very difficult, you're kind of in that red space. And then you shift over to the yellow, it's a much more pleasant space, but still high energy. So when you're excited, when you are having a great time, when you're you know, experiencing joy with friends or family. So then we move down to the um, left-hand um, quadrant on the bottom that's blue, and that's low energy and kind of unpleasant. So that's when you're depressed or when you're disappointed or um, any of those that are kind of those low energy and you're not feeling too fantastic. But then you move over to the green to the right, and that is <laughs> um, low energy, but pleasant. So when you're calm, when you're feeling receptive, when you are just in a, in a much um, calmer state. So in that I found it difficult to find some words there to describe emotions. Um, I also printed out some um, things for you for in a few minutes. But what I'd like everybody to do is just take maybe you know the next 20 seconds and really being honest with yourself because I won't ask you to share, especially since we're recording this, um, how you feel right now and just kind of resonate with that. Where, where on this meter do you fall? Are you in the red? Are you in the yellow? Blue, green, are you somewhere in between? Can I ask a quick question? You can. So energy in this case doesn't mean it's not necessarily positive, no, right? It doesn't have to be. Okay. And, and it it's how you're, you know, again, recognizing that emotion is how your body feels too. Right. It's not just about what you're thinking about, it's right. about how your body is responding to that, okay. what you're thinking about. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And this is what we would do with like a kindergarten. We would say, how's your body feel right now? You know, is it high energy or you, you, you're moving around, you want to move, or are you feeling kind of like your, your body's okay with where it's at? And so that's how we start to teach younger and younger kids without a really robust vocabulary. Well, look to where you are. You know, is it a good feeling or, or an unpleasant feeling? And the, the next question is, do you want to stay in that feeling or do you want to change it? And I think that that's something that we as adults can resonate with. Um, we've done, I've done some activities with staff about, um, and even some members of um, in, in this room, about what does, if you think about it in through a lens of music. And if you think about how if you're driving in your car and you're going to maybe a meeting that you don't really want to go to, um, what do you put on your radio? Do you listen to something that would calm you down? Like some classical music? Do you listen to, you know, do you just listen to whatever's on the radio and let your mind wander? Or do you put on something specific to kind of flip your mood around? And what kind of music do you listen to to shift your mood? Right? So there are times when I might be going to work and I'm I have a full day ahead of me and I need to just refocus. I've got to get in a better headspace, I've got to wake up a little bit, I listen to a certain kind of music. But if I'm coming home from work, I need to just take it down a few notches, I would listen to a totally different kind of music, right? Um, and I think that that's something that we can all relate to, that that's, that's, a, that's a space where you can, what are things that you can do to take care of yourself in those spaces when you might need to? And that's what we're trying to teach kids about. What can you do? What strategies do you have access to or what can we discover together that would start to calm you down or start to make you feel a little bit better, whatever the case is. And if you want to stay in a, in a mood that you're quiet and calm, then that's fine too. You can do what you have to do to stay there. So I think that those are some of those of the experiences that we're having, giving to teachers so that they can start to understand how to present it to students in a way that is age appropriate and that will make sense to them.
Um, and the ruler framework gives you many opportunities and many resources to find those things to do with kids and with adults. Well, clearly I I came prepared. I came with the uh, the yellow and the green, uh, you know, to get in the spirit of the uh, moment here. I'm a little blue and black. So yeah, so, so, right. so what I'd ask you to do, if, if, if it's all right with you, kind of just point to where you where you where you are on that movie meter. I'm not going to point you out to the community, but point to where you are. See if you can recognize. Is it are you feeling high energy or low energy or pleasant or unpleasant? And then what I'm going to do once you're there, you know. When you point, I will give you another mood meter that we can start to work on. Can we label that emotion? So if I see you pointing, I'll give you uh, I'll give you the next level of the mood meter. <laughs> well, it's the advanced version of the movie. Okay. So what you're receiving now is yes. an opportunity. They can't see the paper. Okay. I'm feeling up here in the red now. <laughs> we, we can run the tape back. So guys, it's okay. I mean, it's triggered. <laughs> Clearly. Give me a second. Well, we my mood will change. Word. <laughs> word that that emotion. And I think one of the things that we do with students is in an age appropriate way, we start to introduce some of this vocabulary to them to talk about this is maybe how you feel when you're excited. What is that? What does that feel like? Um, because if you're using that word, tell me what that means to you. Because again, excited means different things to different people. Um, so does um, bored, different things to different people. So I think that that's where we really, that's our charge as we move forward is to really help students um, gain some of that emotional vocabulary so that we can have better conversations with them about how their feelings are affecting what they're doing in school, what they're doing outside of school, their relationships, their connectedness, uh, their engagement, all of those things, when we have a better understanding as adults of how they're actually feeling, and it's more specific, that gives us the tools to help them navigate some of those situations. So what we would do in a lesson like this is we would ask, you know, adults, if we're working with adults or kids, if they're a little older with these, like, well, where you were, can you, what word do you think could most adequately describe how you're feeling? And that's the hard part, right, for them to actually label it, because some of these words are very close. And so you have a conversation around those words. And then lastly, what we'll do later on through this process, and it's a framework, it's not a curriculum or lessons, this is when we get trained up, we have conversations around, was that hard, was that difficult? If you're feeling excited, what made you feel excited? And if kids can go back in time and say, well, here's what I was thinking, or here's what I was doing, or here's what someone else said, that made me excited. The power of that is for adults too, is sometimes we act out and we don't even know why we act out. And so what if we can first think about how we're feeling, label how they're feeling, it may actually change our reaction to that feeling. And that's the power of just the mood meter work. And what we did in five minutes, six minutes, I know we're getting out of time, is would take days and organically happen in the classroom or in a faculty meeting or in a department meeting. So that's just a little bit of, of, of just a little bit of work in mood meter, just to give the board a, a little sense of what the ruler system does, what its purpose is. And, and I really want to thank Michelle. She has been spearheading this thing at the elementary level and district wide. She's done a remarkable job. It's a passion of hers. She's actually incredibly skilled at this work. And I just have to thank her for her leadership in this. And I think the district is, is really fortunate to have her as, as part of our leadership team. So uh, Michelle and I can thank answer any Michelle. questions. And, and I have some questions. Yes. Oh, no. I think you'll. Oh, no. I, I, Lucy, I, I anticipated <laughs> questions. Absolutely. Um, so thank you so much for coming this evening. Um, so I guess some of my questions is, some, um, Greg, you mentioned um, 
a kindergarten, you would ask them to point to this moon meter. So how would this be taught at a middle school and high school? Because obviously you're not going to give them a moon meter like this and say, hey, tell me where you are, or is that how it would be taught? Well, and explain also, and also which, where would it be taught? I mean, in the middle school and high school, you have English, math, like where would this, what course would this be taught? It can be taught in any class. I mean, it's really, it's almost an emotional check-in when you walk into your room. When so, you're switching classes, teachers can have the mood meters up and just say, have a check-in. Is everybody, how's everybody doing today? And does anybody need anything? Do you need, you know, and not that you need to have a, a full-on discussion about it, but if somebody is in a space that seems to be a little bit inconsistent with what's going on, a teacher can have a conversation with a, a private, you know, two-minute conversation with a student and then say, can we talk about this later? Or would you like to talk about this later? Or would you like to go see the school counselor? Or are you just having a bad morning? But it gives us, it gives you as the adults a check-in space that is a, a consistent language across age groups and across buildings. So right now your training is predominantly with uh, teachers and staff, correct? Yes. Now, which staff do you refer to? Is it just the teachers? Like, which staff have you right trained now, so it's, far? It is, um, it's faculty. Right now, it's faculty. Just teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then my next question but is... But also, I'm sorry, to interrupt, okay. but certainly administrators, uh, school secretaries, anybody kind of in the, um, right there in the building next, certainly we're, we're talking about reaching out to our custodial staff and our, our um, bus drivers, and really looping everyone in, but because some of the work is already being done by our school counselor that we hired last summer in the classrooms, we want teachers specifically seeing how what it looks like to deliver one of these lessons. Or so then, what year would that fall into that it gets um, into more of the staff? Is that listed so, here? So or? yeah, so great question. If you look at district wide and what we presented. We offer superintendent's conference days where we're going to be offering more and more of these opportunities for um, non instructional staff to participate in these. So, the important thing is you got to create a critical mass of staff that are trained and can actually deliver it. So, we're starting with the teachers. Um, we are then going to, by superintendent's conference day in March, offer um, other offerings to non instructional teachers. And we're going to do this, Lucy. I think it's a great question organically throughout our process. And our hope is it's not a class, it's not a lesson. Our hope is, is that the implementation teams work with their buildings about what's the best way to introduce this to our kids and our community. Right. Not we're taking a ton of instructional time away, it becomes embedded. So every kid at some point knows the mood meter. And so like, like I have it on the back of my tag here, right. nobody can read that, but I know that um, I'm trained in it. If I run into someone else who's trained in it and say, how are you feeling? And they come up with one of these words. I know that organically we've been trained in it. And our hope is that this becomes cultural in our, in our, in our school community so that um, eventually everyone will go through this training. Everyone will at least have some uh, semblance and knowledge of it and can be able to use the, the vocabulary around ruler so that they understand the importance of emotion because they understand the importance of the people who live and work in our, in our schools. And I can tell you that through the discussions and through some of the faculty meetings and things that we've already done, it, it is apparent that teach, that all adults are craving this for themselves and so that they can turn around and give it to them. So the response has been very positive. Very positive. So okay. what's the, you said you're doing like five yeah, can you, different yeah. buildings. Can what's you, the time, time frame on that? Yeah. So what we do is I've done um, when we started um, to kind of meet as groups, we started with, um, we put it out there to each of the three elementary buildings to say, okay, this is what we're talking about. Who wants to learn a little bit more about it? So it was almost like you caught fire a little bit. So we had um, the implement implementation team met with um, people who were interested to learn a little bit more about it. Um, it was last winter, I think. Um, and we had some meetings about some of these emotional experiences that we're having. I, I did some music things. We did lots of different activities. Um, and this word kind of spread that this is something that we're talking about as a district. Um, really, we haven't decided on it yet, but this is something that we're, um, as a professional learning committee, we're talking to you about to see what, if this is going to fit into our mission and vision. Um, and then 
yeah, as that kind of grew and people were really, they saw the shifts that it was creating within themselves when we had these discussions, they got really excited about what it would do for kids. Right. Um, so it, it morphed into this thing that everybody wanted to do. It wasn't something, it wasn't a have to, it was much more, this makes sense. And it couldn't make any more sense than to do it right now. So I think that that's really, the, it, it kind of comes into faculty meetings right now, superintendent conference days, um, so, but also in just conversations um, at school, in school building. I just have one other question. On page two, it talks about, in addition, SCL has the potential to promote equity in education and establish learning environments, and then it goes on. Just give me examples of how this would be worked into promote equity in education. I think the common thread is empathy. It's really, it's about making sure that we as people understand what different lenses look like and understand that there is this space that if you have the openness to be have empathy for another human being, that's that's where the equity piece comes in. So I just want to make a quick comment and I want to ask a question. So my son is in Lakeview. He's in a program which I never remember, but I can help me out. But basically he has an issue and the, and the kids in the class have an issue in identifying. He gets very frustrated and he can't figure out why he's frustrated. He, he loses his cool he used to. Now, what they had was literally a stop sign. They had red, yellow, and green. And they would say, okay, Danny, where are you? So basically, this is just that on a staircase. Just an expanded level of, of it is. But there are also things that Ruler is doing. Um, it's a new program, Ruler for All. Right. So it gives teachers who are working with special education students, right. working with their nonverbal students, tools right. to help them communicate, just like that, what what they're how they're feeling, um, and give them kind of a, a safe space to feel that way. Terrific. So I will just tell you, and I just want to share, he's done great. He's just, he ate this up and it's helped him tremendously. And he definitely has given him self-awareness. You know, Danny, what, what are you feeling? I feel angry. Or why do you feel angry? Well, because somebody pushed me into, okay, well, and he, he talked through it and, and the, the fact that they're going through this. So I think it, it's working. So I, I think this is great. This set of vocabulary, okay? So at, the, the elements this is fairly some of these words are fairly sophisticated so this is for like the high school okay so for, for somebody in the third grade it would be a different set of okay okay that's... and ruler supplies um, sure each grade level with kind of your emotional vocabulary bandwidth so it it builds on from kindergarten to first grade Terrific. all the way up so this would be certainly a high school level you know Terrific. middle school to high school no, level that's per um, perfect and, and then in terms of so you said there's two teams of five, one at the high school and one at, at the middle school. Was that did I get that right? Yeah, so they're then they're the implementation team. Uh, ruler, you know, takes five people from each building to be the implementation team. Okay. Number okay. one, they're trained and then work with the building principal. How do we roll this out into our building? Okay. So they're in the process right now, right. middle and high school of getting trained. Okay, and the elementary is already done. Yes, yes we have it. So we had uh, the implementation team um, consisted of myself and four clinicians from the from the elementary schools. And Miss Stone is the. She's the school counselor. So she's um, the. So just want to because I just heard her at a different meeting. They mentioned so she's she's helping facilitate at the three elementary yes, schools. She travels to the three elementary schools and she's doing push and lessons. To all of the classrooms, and, and she would be she's she's your point point person at the well whatever she's yes. she's on the team yes. to she's do this at the, the elementary team. school. Mm -hmm. Okay, terrific. So uh, to, to build on what Ben is saying is is in the elementary schools now. Um, what would that lesson look like? Like how when when would something like that? When would you be able to show everybody what that looks like for mm -hmm. what their kids are learning? How how it's being introduced to them. So what um, the conversation has been around is really because Ms. Stone is a new faculty member, she's new on staff, um, she's the first several weeks, she just spent time getting to know the buildings and the kids. Um, so she's on, probably she's going into her um, second lesson because in traveling through those buildings, she's also got to get into every classroom, right? 
So just a few weeks ago, she she had completed meeting every student in the elementary um, buildings. So now really the turnkey is that she's now pushing into classrooms to deliver specific lessons around the mood meter, around feelings, um, based upon what, whatever grade it is, K to five, um, and getting feedback from teachers also on maybe what their classroom needs. Like um, one of the things that she just <laughs> talked, did a lesson on was big problems, little problems for kindergarten and first graders, um, because some things seem like really big problems and they're not. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things, but also navigating the emotions around how you feel when something's a big problem and how you feel when something's not as big a problem. So really introducing some of that emotional vocabulary as well as problem solving around situations that are arising in between kids. Gotcha. So obviously, as Ben pointed out, it's, it's, it's working really well um, in, in the school. So. Um, Hopefully, at some point, um, we can have her come in and. Sure. I, I think that. one of the things that we really want to talk about is how, once this starts to get, um, once this is really established, that like you have a math night, like you have, you know, an ELA night, you have an SEL night. Yeah. And yeah. that's when you have that, that, a big conversation. That's, so that's what I was looking for. Yeah, something I like think that. Like when, can, when, when a timeline, you know, we're looking at next year for more of a full implementation, but when at some point, would that be the time frame ish for me to look for something? Like that? She's talking about the public, right? To show, yeah. okay, yeah. I mean, I think that's an important mm -hmm. thing you should consider. Yeah. And I think what's really important, and I think it's a great point, is to let our community know. I think equally important is to have our staff be comfortable with it because there's only one school counselor at the elementary level. We want every teacher to be trained in it, feel comfortable with it, have a mood meter in their classroom. And be able to use it when necessary. You know, start. How's everybody feeling? Take a moment. Look at the mood meter. You know, talk. Be able to talk to a kid and, and say, you know, do you need a meta moment? Like, how do you picture your best self? But that's going to take a little bit of time to organically get all of our teachers comfortable because we'd love to have like we had with our tech nights and some of our other nights. Teachers come out, be excited about it, share it with parents, have a night where we can go through activities with them. It's going to take a little bit of time. This is a framework. It's not a curriculum. We could slap down on the table and say, like, page one through 40 is scope and sequence, you know, first three months. So I think we're trying to do this the right way by going slow, introducing it, letting it happen organically and seep into our classrooms with a lot of buy in from our staff and our kids, which we're already getting. And we're literally month three in year one of implementation. And teachers are like, I want to know more. I want to know more. And Michelle's a big part of that. So. We're excited about it, and we, we hope to be able to, you know, share that with the community as we become um, more comfortable with it. And I think that that's something that we have to be really clear about, is that um, certainly, even the way that the ruler framework is set up, it is all about the adults for a full year, just teaching the adults how to not only experience it, but get comfortable with their own emotions, expressing them to colleagues, really navigating some of that so that they in turn can really teach it well to the students and have them experience it in a very positive way. So once they take it on themselves, that they can then feed it out to the kids. So I think what's, a, what's important is if you make the analogy of making a commitment to a program, and that's, and I wanna thank Dr. Stolo and, and Michelle and team for doing that because as this district is gonna develop that next four year strategic plan, right this needs to be something that's embedded in that plan and made a commitment to. Very similar to how we did, and Mike and his team, we did the Readers and Writers Workshop rollout, right? We rolled it out elementary, it's now going up to middle, and it's powerful stuff. And, and if you were to speak to teachers in this district, to have that buy-in and make it uniform across the elementary schools and now the middle school, it's kind of that same model. And I think that's really important for the public to understand that, that this Board of Education is making a commitment to this program. It will be a long-term commitment. When we go to present the budget this year to the public, that there'll be money set aside for this work to be done. So we've done some of that work, kind of framework-wise, in other areas under the last strategic plan, which is over this year. And then whoever the new superintendent, he or she will be, well, then I would guess, you know, embody that as they look at their next four year strategic plan. So I want to credit the two of you, the team 
for the work that you've done and will continue to do because you could have all the best instruction you want. If you're not socially, emotionally ready to learn, you don't right. get there. Yeah, and that's the really important, important piece. And it's more important now than ever dealing with what we're dealing with as a, as a society. So Very thank true. you. I, just in a second, I know Tanner's on a Zoom. Uh, Tanner, can you hear us? I can hear you, Mr. President. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine, uh, young man. Uh, did you want to? I, I, I wasn't sure if I could see your hand up or anything. Did you have anything that you wanted to uh, to uh, add with uh, to, uh, uh, to Greg and Michelle? So no particular questions, but obviously thank you, Mrs. Tween and Dr. Stowell for, for your passion and your, quite, quite frankly, your expertise on this issue. I think it's a very important for students to be able to show their emotions, share their emotions and understand that. So no particular questions, but I am actually very happy with the results of your work. And I just can't wait to see this, this go district wide. And like Dr. Stowell said, this should be a culture that we all care about each other because we're people and we're all in this together. We're all in the same schools, we're in the same community. And just to be good, nice people, obviously sometimes you run into people that aren't nice in real life. So you also gotta be able to, when you exit the schools, be able to deal with some difficult people but be able to regulate your emotions well enough to, to get through life because it's not always a safe space, but once you can look inward, I think that's really important. So thank you to both of you. And uh, thank you, Mr. President, for letting me make some comments. Very good, young man. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very informative. You. And uh, we're looking forward, to, uh, looking forward to a lot more. What about a mood meter dartboard? Maybe that's a, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 a higher level. You know, it, doesn't, it doesn't have stress level. Good idea for an adult. Uh, that's, 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 that's where I'm at. There's the other column, the stress level. <laughs> Listen, there's nothing that's like right. in the dark. One to ten. Yeah. Um, Chris, that's what that goes zero to one hundred. His class, yeah. <laughs> taking them, taking this movie to work with. It's it it actually yeah. shaped like a thermometer. Get some of my, get some of my and, uh, eyes under that. Yeah. In my son's class. Oh, so really? So next, I guess we'll be implementing some uh, some uh, meditation and some hot yoga. Uh, you know, to start working. I will tell you some experience that goes a long way. Hot yoga? Not hot yoga. Really yoga. Not, 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 not the hot yoga part. Okay. Just the quiet time and meditation. Yeah, yeah, they have it. yeah absolutely. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. I've been. Um, I had experience with that, and it, it was quite impressive. It's like, it's amazing through the. Uh, through this pan, you know, through this pandemic, how many people have gone to, you know, kind of uh, getting in touch with more of the meditation and more of the quiet time, you know, even even you know, even a lot more more, more spiritual than that than you would think. So good, good, good job all the way around. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if you want to go to, um, so we have a uh, let's go to our review. Uh, we have our November uh, and Thursday, our eight, the 18th. We have the agenda review. Do you want to take a look at that real quick, please? Questions on the uh, on the agenda? Everybody had a chance to take a look at it. And thank you again for the Melody and the team for putting the packets together. Um, those were very good. Except when, except when you're halfway up the Jakarta and you realize that you left your packet on your desk over there. So I apologize for that. But. Um, the good stuff all the way around. Okay, so just to go through, um, so we'll have, uh, we have a couple of uh, presentations. We have uh, the lead program recognition, and then we've got, uh, we've got a most presentation. Um, we have our comments on our agenda, um, agenda items, treasurer's report, warrants, revenue status, uh, budget transfers, extra class quarter uh, for September 2021, our regular meeting minutes from the 21st, our superintendent's report, uh, can't wait. Hopefully, it's uh, we had some Vegas uh, information there on, on, that, uh, on that trip. Uh, uh, committee reports we have uh, donations. <laughs> so, we have um, we have our consent agenda for human resources, which is uh, quite robust, I might add. Uh, we have our uh, we have some MOAs for driver education. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, MTA license stipend, our temporary nurse, which we've talked about. Um, the uh, settlement, uh, special education reports. We've got 
our uh, committee on special education uh, uh, member. Um, Can I just talk to that? Sure. What is, that? what is this? Is this a new member? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a we have um, somebody who's temporarily filling in for our school psychologist at one of our buildings. In order for them to chair meetings, the board has to approve uh, them. Oh, okay. Because I didn't recognize the name. Okay. Yeah, that's probably one you didn't recognize the name. So temporarily filling in for someone on the. Okay. And then we've got the learn well. Now that's the academic tutoring that uh, uh, that uh, I know Mike and Greg and, and the team have worked on and Anthony have worked on. Uh, you know, in order to get uh, some additional uh, services, correct, Michael? Some additional. So it's a little bit different. Oh, okay. President Mondin, this is <laughs> okay. for kids that are hospitalized for social emotional issues. Right. By law, we have to provide them education. Learn well as part of that hospital. This is the uh, this is the agreement so that those kids can get educated in the hospital. Oh, okay. All right. So, Very good. Yeah. Okay. And then we have some we have some um, um, agreements with the Lakeland School District, the Henry Hudson Central School District. We have excess inventory. Can't believe we're finally getting rid of the fax machines. Very excited about that. <laughs> you know, they've only been taking up room for the last 25 years. Uh, but again, um, you know, of course they'll be they'll they'll be on eBay for you know for thousands of dollars. So I don't know. Superintendent Plus may want to look at that because it's going to be worth something. Uh, we have a budget calendar that we'll be adopting. We have our transportation contract with uh, so much as the POCES. We have a Brewster Ice Arena contract. Um, and then we've got our uh, uh, testing uh, service agreement for uh, for Miramis COVID-19. Uh, uh, Greg, would you mind, could you yeah. comment on that? Yeah, Anthony, could you have Greg comment on sure. that real quick, please? I want to just thank Greg and, yeah. and the, the team. This has been a long uh, process. Um, as you know, the federal government has given money to the states for testing and we work closely with the county and you know getting contracts done overnight isn't easy it takes a process so i want to thank greg i want to thank our legal team um we're finally there and greg i'll turn over to you so uh, as this board knows uh, school districts are required to test uh, covid test staff members um, who have not opted out or are not vaccinated they must be tested weekly uh, this is a contract for a saliva testing company where staff members who have to be tested uh, can use a saliva test um, and that we will manage it that way. Uh, much easier. Other districts have used them and it gotten good results with the pool testing or flex testing so that you can get down if there's any positives and, and report out. So this is just a contract uh, so that we can begin that process. Okay. And where will the testing be done? Is it, is it do they go into each building? So the test will be done at home. Oh, okay. uh, staff members will bring in their sample. We'll be telling them where to return them at their building, and then it gets shipped out for for lab. So we're trying to not in, impact the educational process, so that, and 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 have less impact on staff members, so that we can um, make sure that we comply with the testing and and really keep our building safe. At the same time, not impact instructional time during the day. Okay. So, so they really do actually have to get the, sent out. They're not a uh self-test that they do at home they correct they get they sent out to home. the lab gotcha. the lab right. then uh the lab then um then gives us the results but only by number they don't know who we know who and that way we can determine and notify right. what necessary and these are only folks who are not vaccinated is that correct or folks that are not vaccinated or folks that are vaccinated but opted into the testing wanted okay. to be tested okay, okay. And and, does it start? And, and turn around time on the test yeah. they say 24 to 48 hours at the most has been their their uh their turnaround time. when are you going to start with this we hope to start um sometime around the week after the week after we get back from it oh in january it, no, oh, no, 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 no thanksgiving break yeah oh, not, not, not the uh, holiday break yes. yeah. so hopefully that's um, great we're onboarding the new people to help us with this process. We'll get the contracts all ready to go. We'll take the week after Thanksgiving to set everything up. And then the following week, we hope to be starting. Thank I, think, I think that's very good. That's the great. District you the Thank you. Yeah, very good. Well done. Okay. And then we have a standardized contract for interconnection between the uh, school district and NYSEG. Uh, we have policy 9141. Is that, is that for the That's for the EPC. Mm -hmm. okay. We've got the uh, Q, 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 can we have Mr. Yeah. President? Yeah, Mr. Ahead. President, can yeah. you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have a question on 
agenda item Q, the, the policy you're on right now. So yeah. I don't know, I don't know who can someone on the policy committee can answer my question, but I'm looking at the two documents that are put in there, the, the previous one and then the new one. So the 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 current one, which is 6122, I believe, dash 9140.1, that one is completely going to be like removed now, right? Once this other document is passed, right? That that one is going to be kind of be nullified, correct? Right. Yes. Okay. And then I have some specific questions about the new one. So I, I gave it a good read through. So I think this language is for starters, most of it is way better than what we had. It's a lot more specific and it seems a little more like a, like a thought out process. I did have a question though. It's when I get to the, the regulations parts of it, it's the second half of it. Melody, I don't know if you want to pull it up or not to make sure my, my like, you know, my question can be kind of directed, but in the first half, it talks about when there's a grievance filed against the superintendent and then that goes to the board. That makes sense to me. But then in the regulations, it's, it, am I reading this correctly? This is my question is, if an employee goes to their supervisor and doesn't like how the grievance is handled, it goes to the superintendent. And then if they don't like how the superintendent handles, handles it, they can file another basically appeal and it goes to the Board of Education. Does that mean any employee can eventually go through this process to, to be reviewed by the Board of Education? Am I reading this correctly? That's, that's, that's the unions that are able to file those um, grievances. Is that what he's talking about? No, I'm just talking about. So, right, what do you mean? R is the new one, right? R is the regulation. Right. Is R the new? No, the only thing that's new is where it says other complaints and grievances on there. This yeah. is the new part. So, if the superintendent so the regulations of schools is complaining employee same. supervisor and subject of the complaint when it shall be brought to the board president who shall share the allegations of the complaint with the board of education to determine how the complaint will be investigated. Right. The board will bring such complaint to the attention of the superintendent. The board of education reserves the right to appoint an outside investigator if warranted. So which part, which part are you questioning? So what you just read is yeah. in the, the the first half, and I think that makes sense. If you go down to the R, the nine one. That's the regulation. That's the regulation. the regulation. Okay, so what's what what regulation? what is changing really? What what are we changing here? That's what the bigger question. Is. Yeah, yeah. Is that right. I mean, it's very simple. You know. Right. The, the the change is just where it says, and not in the regulation, but in the actual yeah, policy, in the policy, where it says other complaints and grievances. Oh, so the regulation that didn't whole, get changed. No. no. Okay. The regulation didn't get changed. Yeah, the R didn't get changed. That's okay, the regulation didn't get changed. No. Oh, okay. So, so. Okay, because I, I I got confused because attached to the to agenda. <laughs> no, right. It's just this part that changed. Yeah, I, yeah. It's just for you to see the whole process. We should yeah. just. No, it's just for you to see the whole highlight. process. It, it took a the policy and the regulation. Do we have the benefit of having to call it print? When we reviewed it, well, yeah, yeah and again, that's why we were telling them apart was the, the yeah. Print, but, yeah, and the reason for mm -hmm. this addition, just it was uh, uh, the attorney Chinese. recommended yeah. it. Attorney mm -hmm. recommended. Okay, that, that, yeah. it was recommended by. That's what I just, <laughs> yeah, again, well, nothing was stated there, and I kind of just. So, do you I want, want the next time that policy goes in a little synopsis to be put in there? Does that make sense? Well, either we have to have a full explanation here as a board because we're going to yeah. adopt the policy, or you know, it would be nice to see it highlighted so I know, you know, yeah. maybe what changes were. Because I see these two pieces of paper and I read them. used to do that. Probably like yeah, Henry, no, I, and I, I have no idea. Minutes, in the, in the so I had no okay, idea what like, we were talking about. We'll highlight that. That's good. That's a yeah. good idea. I, I do like when it's highlighted. Or bold, bold print. Bold. This is jump out at it. it. Bold that's fine. Yeah, so. It's in print highlighted. That's all. I know. I don't. You know, there's an ink shortage, especially color. It just said in print. <laughs> <laughs> They're in a uh, in a container in, uh, in California. <laughs> is that is that uh, a Yeah, no that that was mainly my question because when I see the two documents, I'm thinking one's the old, one's the new, and I couldn't find the regulations anywhere else in the policy manual. So that's why that's why I asked that 
question. So I guess, so current regulations say if an employee is unhappy with their initial grievance and how that's handled by the supervisor, they can appeal for a review to the superintendent. And then if they don't like how that's handled, they can appeal again. And then it goes to the board for review, right? Under current regulation. But yes. this regulation only addresses people who are not covered by collective yeah. bargaining agreements. Yeah. These are for non-represented employees. Collective bargaining agreements and cover the other employees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. And, and just to go off of what Trustee Simone was saying, if we could, again, something bolded italicized to distinguish the differences and then just a brief memo from the policy committee, because that's discussions being had separate from the board. So kind of similar to a report or something, just if there's a memo, just a short, just this is what we changed. This is why we changed it. So, you know, it could, it could be more understood, but it was this good to have it. It's a, that's, that's why it's at the work session. That's, why we're, that's yeah. why we're doing, that's what we do now. That's so we do yeah, I know. That's yeah, yeah, but we're just saying if the packet's coming, at least we got a heads up. That's all. But yeah, but instead of, instead of, instead yeah. of being confused about what I'm looking at, I can see that and then more easily develop an opinion. So I'm not confused when we go into the work session. That's, that's my point. So then I can ask questions and then give my opinion without thinking I'm looking at the wrong thing. That, that's my point. Uh, demonstrated over well, the, uh, the These things, yeah. this also covers things outside of collective bargaining, like harassment and things that you wouldn't find because grievances in a collective bargaining agreement really have to do with contract violations. This is more encompassing than that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good, move on. Yep. Okay. Uh, policy uh, 6170, the change orders uh, uh, regarding the, um, the 2019 capital improvement project. Uh, that's in here. Um, uh, policy 1312E, uh, school board member code of conduct. What's, what's changing? So yeah. same question. What's changing there? So there was an uh, additional policy. It was a duplicate. Yeah. Oh, okay. So the 1312, the 1312 is... Is a duplicate, totally, so I'm rescinding one of them. Right. So it's just, they are just, and you read each one. They're absolutely the difference is if you look at so them, the one's one. got numbers next to it, one's one. got letters. That's all right, so all the numbers are cleaning it up. Yeah. All right, I got it. Yeah, thank you. All right. Yeah, we're looking for difference. Okay. And then we'll, and then, and then we'll have our resident, we'll have our resident comments. All right, cool. Can I just ask a question? Sure. On the Bruce Ice Arena contract, when I looked at the invoice, we still have an outstanding payment in the over 90 days. I noticed on here because you know when the contract started. So this would have started. Does it start on here? Last year still has to be we we have to be brought home. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Last year still has to be brought home. The last this is from the 9700 is from last year. Um. No. Yes, the 9700 is from last year. So that's from last year. So why would we not have that paid by now since it's in Because we don't have a contract in place. Because I've been asking, honestly, I, I don't So we don't have a contract from last year. Correct. This is this year's contract. So how many students actually play the sport? Do we know? Is it yeah, sure? You have probably on, on your bar seat, you have anywhere, depending on the year, 25 to 30. Yeah. And a good. 20 to 25 on modern phones. We don't kids that play hockey. We've been a happy, you know, we've had a hockey program here for yeah. very, very long yeah. time. And a pretty good program at that. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, yes. and how is insurance cost? Do the district covers that insurance cost? Yeah, yeah. 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 and our premiums, yeah. So that's included in our mm -hmm. premium? Okay. And then my other question is, um, on the budget calendar, we worked on this in finance. And if you look at February 1st, one of the things we discussed that when the board is presented with our initial budget presentation, I asked for that to be included in there is what all the schools needed and any like uh, the departments, for example, curriculum, special ed, that that should be included in that. So I don't so know if you're you can... not, that, that initial presentation, we're going to go over the parameters and variables and the things that we're going to be asking for in the budget. Remember, we go through a budget process. That first meeting is an overall discussion about our needs, our wants, our direction, our meeting, our uh, mission, vision, and goals. So that's what that first meeting comes up. 
and then we start going through each part of the budget and each part we will have the different budgets of what's being presented and in there the addition the additional items that we're looking for. so when we met in finance we had said that by february 1st the meetings that you're conducting right now through january you'd be able to share that with us not as line by line but i cannot share that the but you're going to share with that. us what each building, for example the high school what their needs are and exactly. what their wants that's are the parameters that that okay yep well that's we had exactly said we would we add that on to the night and see that that's why it says um, well, it doesn't show buildings and by department, so I just wanted to expand it to make sure we included that. So I understand the same parameters, but I just want to make sure we don't come to February 1st and we don't see all the needs of every division and the and building. Right. And then you've also got remember, so the parameters and variables, we talked about the district. We talked about what the scope, the direction we're going in, and the things that we need, right? And some of that will be the things that have been asked for. We'll get more into detail as we move through the process. And the process is we go through departments. So you're going to see the building presentation, the transportation presentation. You know, you're going to see all of those special ed curriculum. All those things are going to happen. They happen at different meetings and it will all come out. So it starts at a, a higher level in these down. bigger buckets. And what Lucy wants to see is basically down, drill down to the budget. So you're not going to be able to we drill need down. To drill down. We're really not there at that point. We right. can talk about the things in front in that initial budget meeting. Right. Okay, otherwise we'll move the date because it will be too soon to get to go into that. So, so they may so not we really be really need to hear all of those things. That's why we could set up that way. But but just to kind of the thing I'm still Lucy's trying to get, but you're building that bigger, those bigger buckets by get conversations them. with everybody, right? Okay. So you're talking to Gary, and, and we'll and have a budget gap. We should have a budget gap at that point because there will be a budget gap, which is going to be basically here's what we expect our tax cap to be, right? right? Here's what we have as our initial state aid projection from the state, which should come in around January 15th, okay? Right? Here's our initial blush at the budget, you know, here are all the buckets. Here are the things that have to increase, right? We right. have all of that. That's right. that plus to continue. Okay. Here's our plus to continue. Now here's all our ads. Right. Okay. Here's the things that we need to add. How do we make it all work within that tax cap? That's what that's that's where we're going to be. That's what we're going to need to work through. And then you're going to look at all of those different things and have to weigh them out. Some some decisions. That's why you'll have all of that information. But we'll get into the more of the detail as we go into each one of the different departments. Right? So the beginning is an over, overall. The first meeting is an overall. And then each meeting following that, as we start going into the different areas, we get into that many great. But to your point, we have had several initial conversations with regards to the overall budget meeting with the leadership team of Falcon Dublin. And directive was given we're going to make sure that every meeting that we need as buildings everybody sees what those buckets look like for example every day that you know sandra and and her team are working on it we get updated information all the time right meaning that you know whether it's medicare increases whether it's insurance increases so we start to see those buckets which are not instructional but are mandated like these are you have no choice these are these are contractual obligations this is what has to be done right. and let's face it i mean you know to the board here to the public we're dealing with inflation yep. the costs of everything are going up everything's going up, right so that's part of the dynamic of looking at as we get ready so that everybody understands where we're at we i've given directives to the building principals we've begun to look at staffing we're looking at numbers secondary we're looking at what our predicted, um, you know, uh, retirements look like, what class sizes look like, all these conversations have been had. So when we present to you as a board, all those numbers have already been looked at, and you can take a look at what some of those things are globally, and then actually building level. Now, we need to understand a couple of things. You're gonna see more in this year's budget when it comes to mandated things that we have no control over. I've mentioned it a, a number of times. Our, our, our L population is growing exponentially. There are certain requirements that we have to have in regards to ratio of student to teachers. They're going to see an increase in that. Special education, as Dr. Stola has mentioned on several occasions, we continue to get more students in. 
which which in some cases were not budgeted for in this year's budget that are now going to have to be transferred to next. So when we're starting to just initially look at these numbers, I got to be honest, you know, there's not going to be a lot of that wiggle room because of these fixed costs and other things that we have to do. What I don't want to see us do is sacrifice all the hard work and programs that we put in over the last four to five years. So how does that balance it look? And you'll see what it looks like in each building because what I we need to report to the community and to the board is here's the programs that we've added back over the last four years because prior to that we were in pretty bad financial times and we did a lot of cutting right and so we were able to add program and things back so all that will be explained and will be discussed um you know i have had very heart to heart meetings with our pto councils i have told them that you need to make sure that you echo when we're having these meetings. We need to have input from the community. It, because what we decide, and I present the superintendent's our budget, it's not just me, but the you know, superintendent's budget to the board, then the board ultimately makes a decision of what that number is that goes out. But we, we should want, to, and we do want to hear from the public on what they value and what they think we need to continue to keep in our programs. Because there could be some tough decisions that their input is going to be vitally important. So, you know, we're much further ahead of the game um, with regards to getting ready for the budget. And I'm comfortable, you know, that as you get updates in your packets, questions that come up, and things that, you know, we need to uh, echo or reiterate or further clarify for you. You know, we're, we're, we're all on board. And we, we want to make the process as open and transparent as possible. But understand it's not going to be you know, an easy year. And as was mentioned, and I understand the frustrations. It'd be nice to say, here's the number in February. We can't. And I got to be honest with you, we're in an election year. Everybody in the state is up, right? So, you know, who knows what the governor's going to put into her initial budget, what that looks like, and then ultimately what the, the assembly and the Senate does, or what the number is. And that's always the, the piece that we're always hanging in on and we're always waiting. So we can have all these calculations ready to go. What's that final number? And then what does that allow us to keep? What does it allow us to have to possibly add? Which would be great, right? Depending on how much money we get, what we have to take away. So that's you know that's part of the process. And I think that um, you know we'll be ready to go and, and, and we'll see where the numbers lie and what the state you know gives us in state aid this year. Right. So again, we start with that roll over budget. We look at all the things that now those 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 mandated pieces that just funneled in to come to a number. Then we have we will have that other list from all the multiple budget meetings we have. I mean, um the, the, the nitty-gritty, somebody asking about supplies or this or that, that's not gonna be that's that that's not what what that you need to focus on the people focus on is the big piece, the big piece. It's personnel. Yeah, it's it, where it, our benefits it, are. It, you know, it's um, you know, between our salary and the benefits, remember we're at 80 plus percent. Um, the rest of it, you know, you have there's other areas, you know, but there's things we have transportation, we have buildings and grounds, you know, all those other operational pieces, we have technology, all of those, you know, all need to be funded. And they have been cut over the years in some areas that you know we don't have a lot of places to go. Right? We, can, we, can, we can't have any more, we can't have less staff in transportation or, or um you know buildings and grounds we cut. So these are the things when 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 we're going through that we're gonna we're going to be talking about. We're gonna have these things that we did add this year that we need to add for next year. And those when you're talking about personnel, I say pick it up. That's the things that we now need to, need to look at and focus on. And then how, how if to, to make and meet our, our gap, right? We do, and then the people are going to ask about the stimulus money. I know they are going to ask about that. And there is money in there, but it's some, some of it is specific, right? It's put out there. There's a state portion of the American Rescue Plan specifically for learning loss, right? And that's a, a big piece of that grant. So we have to spend that a certain way. And we can use some of that to try and bridge the gap. But remember that gap, if there's not money coming in after, you fall right off the cliff. So we have to be very careful how much we rely on stimulus money over the next couple of years, 
because if we do not see that money replaced in another way, we're just taking the can down. Can't support the program. So we can use this. I think use it to supplement, not replace. Exactly. It. Right. It's the safest way, but I guess the easiest way to explain it. If you it. think the analogy, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's the same thing that when you get grant money, you get grant money up front, right? Like you, you know, you'll see this all the time. You know, the municipalities get cops fund, right? And they can fund cops for the first two years, but then after that, you're picking it up. Right. So you need to know that if you want to keep that position or positions that now becomes a part of your normal budget. So. And a lot of grants are that way. Like, okay, well, I've got the money for you, but like after those two or three years, it's now on you, and you got to make sure you project that into your your then operational budget. So I think that that's what's being echoed, and every school district is dealing with that. So you know, you're getting the stimulus money, which is great. We went through a very difficult time, yeah. but then you know, then you own it after those two or three years, and that becomes part of your operational budget. So again, you know, uh, community involvement will be very important. We want people to speak back. I will make sure. And my updates, I'll be doing a special spotlight on it, going through Lucy the calendar with the public to make sure that people come out and they understand this night is going to be this presentation, whether it's athletics, whether it's transportation, whether it's the buildings, whether it's curriculum, please come out so that you can hear uh, and get an overview and ask questions along the way. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, yeah. With regards to the ice to the ice hockey thing, no, uh, Anthony Sandra, do talk with me, do whatever we got to do to clear that up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It, it's just that we don't have a practice. Okay. Well, I, 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 uh, can call, I can call the booster. <laughs> That's not. <laughs> but, so we paid you some know. of the money. So no, it was a short season. Yeah, it was a short. It was a short season, cold. and there was it wasn't canceled. Short. Yeah, it was, it was short. Yeah, it was my short it was season. That's why ice it, time was. So it was only nice. Like, so yeah. it was only this ninety-seven hundred. Is that what it is? Yeah. And that's why that's the outstanding balance. Right. Oh, okay. So between Anthony and Sandra, please take care of this. Do you speak to Steve and the ice rink? And get whatever you need from them to clear this up. Thank you. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do right now, so we're finishing with resident comments, and uh, and we're going to what we're going to do right now is I'd like to make a motion uh, to go into executive session. We've got some uh, personal uh, uh, we have some personal matters to discuss. A very robust um, so moved. HR. Uh, thank you, Michael. Can I get a second? Second. Second. Okay. Uh, you I'll give it. it to Senior Trustee Masafra. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'd like to uh, thank the uh, Hope Pack community.